Good morning, peeps. Welcome to another vlog. It is yet another very frigid day here in Toronto, Ontario. We are just about to pop out and head to another job site. Vlog 123, I ended up talking about the different things that I was supposed to do in that job, and all I ended up doing was replacing a refrigerator valve. In this job, I'm going to be doing a couple other things in the exact same job site. I'm going to be doing a water closet installation, and we're going to be also doing a vanity. I'm not sure if it's a pedestal sink but I'll be honest with you I really hope it's not a pedestal sink because it's not my favorite fixture to work on it's a little bit on the irritating side but we're gonna find out peeps let's get to work let's have some fun oh and by the way peeps you know what to do baby let's go do some delicious pluck show you what exactly we're planning in for today. Um, the first thing that we're doing is we're prepping for the vanity that's coming in. So as you see right here, we got the hot and cold valves coming from the floor. We also got the water closet supply there as well. I'm going to have to put valves on all three of these, but first of all, these are pretty far out from the wall. So I have to di divert these inwards about three to four inches and then upwards so that we have one on each side of this uh, drain right here. The other thing that I should mention is I actually took a bit of time earlier and I undid this cap right here and the reason why I did that was because I wanted to see how good this cut was if this cut was bad I want to redo the cut with a hacksaw right now before the vanity comes in because once the vanity comes in it's gonna be a little bit harder to get a straighter cut for it so by doing it before the vanity comes in it kind of alleviates the strain we're gonna have on space to get the hacksaw in that's the game plan for right now let's get to it Peeps, I start this job off by shutting the water to the house and shop vacuuming all of it out. These pipes I'm opening here are the lowest point of access. There's nowhere lower in the house that I can drain it from. So when I open up these caps, I will literally be getting all the water between the second floor and the main level. So having a shop vac is really important. In vlog 123, we also noticed that this house takes a long time to drain, so the shop vac speeds up the process for us. I start off by diverting the hot and cold, and I cut two short four inch nipples. I also cut an extra one for the water closet closet supply. We usually leave the water closet cold water pipe approximately six inches in length. This is so that the supply line is able to easily connect. I noticed that the pipe was already short so you're going to see me put it in a scudgeon plate and lengthen the pipe later on. One thing you'll notice is, is I don't put the escudgeon plates on the hot and cold for the vanity. The contractor that hired us told me he intends to cover up the pipes so there will be no need for escudgeon plates.
thing this video is going to prove to us is the use of having a full dry fit of all of our piping. In a little time, I'm gonna have to redo a mistake coming up, and I could have avoided this mistake if I put all my piping together before soldering. So my advice to you is this, if it's not too much of a hassle, dry fit it if you can, because sometimes you'll be able to notice limitations you'll have in the future. So it's at this point that I realized that the two R14s are way too close to the wall for me to comfortably solder them without burning the wall. So if I dry fitted them before, I would have been able to tell that this was gonna be an issue. So I have to now come up with a solution that does not burn the wall with its fresh wallpaper. And just like that, we're done soldering. But one thing that I got to point out is that I didn't realize that the wall was going to be so close to the two R14 valves that I soldered at the end. If I had known that, I would have actually soldered them at the beginning, which is essentially what I did. It was the correction that I made. I had to add two couplings, unfortunately, which means I lost a bit of material. But that's something to keep in mind. So basically from the floor where the 90s shoot upwards, the wall actually bows closer as you go up. So it gets closer and closer closer to the valves, it bows upwards. So that's why we didn't have as much space as we had hoped for and we had to do what we had to do, but you know what, that's how you learn, that's how you figure it out. Next time when I'm in a situation like that, I'm gonna have to start looking at whether or not the wall is straight or whether or not the wall is bowing like this one right here. That way we can save some material. I'm gonna grab some lunch, we're gonna head back in and we're gonna continue doing some delicious plumbing. <laughs> The one obstacle I ran into when installing the water closet was that the flange was too low. So you're gonna see me install a flange extension kit. The main concern when installing an extension kit is that you seal between the kit and the original flange itself. You're doing everything possible to ensure that the water goes into the flange rather than around the kit or around the flange. So we're gonna use a couple of methods to ensure this. We add silicone to the flange and the extension kit and I also secure the bolts onto the extension kit via an old nut that we got from the previous bolt. This allows there to be compression between the extension kit and the flange and ensures that there is a tight connection between them. Lastly, if we absolutely must, the extension kit actually comes with holes so that we can screw the kit into the original flange if we need to. I've done this a few times in the past, but only when necessary. In other words, when there was no other way to seal the assembled extension kits together.
So peeps, this is an Ikea sink, and I've gotta be honest, I've only installed a handful of these in my career thus far. I have to say they go in pretty smooth, but you're going to see me do something atypical because of it. Ikea drains are designed to shoot as far back into the cabinet as possible so that they can have functional shelving. To accommodate this, I have to install a fitting 90 and an inch and a half trap adapter. I'm allowed to put in the fitting 90 because we're allowed a total of 135 degrees of turn before we get to our protective vent, but it is atypical to use a trap adapter to secure the trap arm of a P-trap, and we only really use this strategy in applications of IKEA drains. The one thing I really don't know is if IKEA drains, which are PVC, have a smoke and fire rating that is allowed in high-rise residential in Ontario. I know that in this house that I'm working in, we are totally good, but I'm weary when I'm in a high-rise building and I have to install one of these. So peeps, if you have any information, please feel free to share it in the comments. I would love to find out some answers about this. All done. Alrighty, and just like that, we're done a whole day of plumbing. Just to quickly talk about what you just saw, that was an Ikea drain. I don't typically do a lot. I've probably done a handful in my career, but actually they're pretty simple. They're all hand tight. Their inside diameter is inch and a quarter but uh, their outside diameter is an inch and a half. That's the one thing to know. And uh, all you have to really remember is to put them as far back into the cabinet as possible. I ended up connecting it with a fitting 90 and a trap adapter, which was an inch and a half by inch and a half trap adapter. And that's just another day in the life of a plumber. Peeps, thanks for watching. Do me a favor, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button down below and hit that bell notification so you know exactly when we're getting videos. Smash that thumbs up button, share with friends, and I'll see you plumbers very soon. Kenny Molotov, guys. Peace, baby.